Hello everyone and welcome to another SQL tutorial on our channel Learn at NoStar. Today we are going to be talking about dynamic data masking. Dynamic data masking is a technique to prevent exposure of sensitive information like credit cards to unprivileged users. Now there are other techniques as well which should be implemented along with dynamic data masking like auditing, like row level security and encryption which we are not going to go into details in this video but these need to be implemented for a stronger security level of the database. The dynamic data masking is basically to prevent some other users who are not authorized to view the sensitive information so it will be masked in some forms. Let's see how we can implement this in SQL Server. So we are going to be working with a table called the membership table and you can see it has some information like the first name, the last name, the phone, the email, uh, there's a date of birth column and there's also some credit card information. So there might be a need to hide or mask some of these information for some unauthorized users. So we'll see how this can be implemented through SQL Server. Now most of the examples that we are using in this tutorial are already provided on the Microsoft site itself. So I will provide the link to that page also and you can go through that link and you can uh, go through that or navigate through the examples there as well so let's first try to mask the data in a string column so the first name column uh, and we will also try to hide it in a column discount code which is a numeric column and i'll also try to hide it for the column date of birth which is the date time column so these are different data types which we are going to try to mask with the different arguments and different functions that are available in sql server so to mask the data in a column we are going to define the column as a mask column in the table structure so if it is an existing table then we are going to be needing the alter table statement to alter the table structure and the column structure and define it as a masked column so to alter the table we simply need the alter table statement so i'm going to use the alter table statement and give the table name and then i'm going to use the alter column statement and give the column name so i'm just uh, first going to start with the first name column and then what you have to mention is add must with brackets function equal to and here is where you can provide the options for this function so the first option that we're going to explore is the default option so i'm just going to write default again brackets and this is going to be my alter table statement i'm just going to execute this query and it should be altering the first name column in the table membership and marking it as a masked column in the format default. I'm just going to execute this query. This query executes fine. Now, there were two other columns on which I wanted to execute this query. So I'm just going to copy and paste and do it. So the other column I wanted to do it was on discount code because I just wanted to check how it would behave if the column is. Um, numeric column so we are just going to execute this query as well and it should return fine and i'm just going to copy it again and execute it for a date of birth column which is a date time column so we would be able to see what would be the output for a date time column with the option default for unprivileged users now if we execute this query again which is select star from membership you will see that there is no impact to the data. The data is as it is and I can view the complete details. This is because the user that I'm using has access or privilege on this data so that I can view the data, the original data. But let's now go ahead and try to create a user who does not have access. So we are going to create a test user and then we are going to execute as test user this particular query and we're going to see the uh, mass data create the test user we are simply going to use the create user statement and uh, let's call him test user and because we do not want to define a detailed login credential for this user i'm just going to say without login and then i'm going to provide a simple select access to a schema to this particular user so to grant the select access i'm going to use the grant statement so grant select on schema and this is 
the syntax you need to follow so in my case the schema is dbo within the database training uh, to the user that we just created so this is test user so we have here uh, granted a select access to this user. So I won't worry too much about this uh, or these statements of creating the user and running the access at this point. This is more for the database admin guy, but it is good to know how to create these test users. So now we have created a user. We have executed. Uh, we have given this access. Let's see. Uh, okay, so the user already exists. We just need to pass on this access which has been passed on to this user. So now, so the next step is to execute our select statement as this user, because since we are logged in as admin user to execute any statements, we have to write the statement execute as user equal to test user. So once we have the statement, we're going to execute the further queries as this user and we can see whether the data visible to this user is going to be masked or unmasked. So I'm just simply going to write my select statement for the membership table. So select star from membership. And if I run these statements after this execute as user test user, this is the output that we are going to get. So you can see that the first name column has been replaced by four X's. It was a string column. So this is the default behavior any number or any length of the string column it will be replaced by just four x's if it is of a length which is less than four then it will be replaced by less than four x's uh, the discount port column you can see it has been replaced by zero so any number column will be replaced by zeros and for any date time columns there would be a default value default date value which is 1900 which would be replacing the date uh, values but there might be cases is where we would not be wanting this default behavior and we would want to mask them differently so there are other options that can be used and we can mask these columns in a different way so let's go back to our queries for masking and here let's add one more masking query first to see another option that can be used with this mask function so you can see that there's a column called email over here so there's an explicit option called email which is specifically for email values for masking email values so if i use that we'll see how it works instead of default you just need to say email over here and i'm just going to execute this query for the email column and i'm going to go back and execute as test user here again and now we see you will see that the email has also been masked so you can see the first character it gets retained the dot com gets retained and the remaining characters get replaced by xxx and there's an add in between that you see so there's a finite number of x's always irrespective of what exactly is the email so there would be the first character then three x's then add and then four x's then dot com and so on so this is the behavior of the email option now let's explore some other options as well so the other option that we're going to explore is again for a numeric value so like a value in discount code column so here you can actually specify a range of values that you want to replace these values with so we already have a mask on the discount code column here if we go we already put a mask now I want to alter this mask so I'm going to alter this mask Alter the mask, I already have the mask added on this column. So this add uh, over here has already added the mask. So for just changing the mask on an already mask column, what you need to do is give a statement like this. You just do not need to provide this word add. So what you need to do is say alter column, column name, mask width, and you then you need to define your function. You do not need the word add here because it is an already mask column. So the mask has already been added on this column. Now the function is what we are going to change here. So we are going to change it to random and then we are going to define a range. So let's say the range is going to be 20 to 30. So this is simply how you can define the range over here. And then we are going to execute this query once again. So here you can see we've got an error message that there is an incorrect syntax. This is because you need to mention the data type as well here. So the data type for this column is small n and this is what we have mentioned over here. And now you can see this is the correct format. So we are going to order this column 
when you're going to alter an already mask column then there's a little bit different format instead of this add you need to provide the data type over here so i'm just going to execute this query now and this should work correctly now let's go back to our test user and try to execute the query again on the membership data so this is our test user. I'm going to execute it again. And you can see that the discount code has been replaced by random values falling between 20 and 30. So now let's try another option with the phone number column. So in the phone number, you can see that there is a format that we have got. There are three digits, then there's a dot, then a, again three digits, then a dot and four digits and so on. So uh, there is another option which kind of allows you to define a custom sort of masking. It doesn't... I mean, and it's not totally custom sorting it has its limitations but a basic custom sorting it would allow you to do so for that the option is called partial and we're going to partially make visible the prefix the and the suffix and then we're going to replace the portion within the prefix and suffix so anything in between by a definite string that we're going to provide so let's try to do this and see what are going to be our results so let me just copy this alter table statement and write it again for the phone number column I'm just going to copy it and what we're going to do now is let's add phone add mask with function is equal to partial and the arguments you provide to this function are the prefix so prefix is the number of characters that you want to display so you if you say one one character would be displayed as it is and then the remaining part would be uh, substituted by the substring that you're going to provide here or if you say two then two characters would be two original characters would be displayed so let's say we want to display the two original characters and then we are going to provide a padding for in between so the padding is going to be something like x um, let's say x dot x x x uh, dot x x and then uh, let's say we want only one character from the end to be displayed so I'm just going to provide one over here so th so now if I execute this statement the command has been executed successfully going back to my test user I'm going to execute this and you can see that the first two characters have been retained the remaining the uh, string or the characters in between have been replaced by the substring that we provided and the last character has been retained as well so you can provide a custom sort of uh, masking for some columns also like credit card number information that is also most of the times it is the last four digits which are visible and the other digits are uh, masked so one two three four five six seven eight so eight digits we can mask uh, in this case in our case so we let's go back and i'm just going to copy this again and include this for the credit card number column as well so let's call it cc number and then uh, we want nothing from the prefix to be there so i'm going to say zero then i want how many x's i want is eight so one two three four five six seven eight and then i want the last four digits to be as it is displayed so that is what i'm going to say over here so just executing this part of the query and going back to a test user and you can see that all the other digits have been replaced by x's and only the last four characters are visible for the credit card number as well now please note that this partial um, masking technique is available only for string columns now there's another option called date time that is applicable for date time columns like the date of birth column that we had but it is only applicable on sql server 2022 and later so i'm not going to discuss it in this video but on the link that i'm going to provide all the options would be there now let's say we want to provide this user finally access to this data then that can be done as well you can just provide the unmask access to this user so you can write a grant statement and simply say grant and mask to the user that we ha you have created so test user 
So if you run the statement, he should be able to see the mask data. But before doing that, let's go and see how you can unmask a column. So let's say now I do not want to have this uh, particular, let's say on the date of birth column. I don't want to have that mask data on the date of birth column. I want to unmask the data. So all the users should be able to see the data from the date of birth column or the discount code column. So what you can do in that case is simply drop the mask on that column. So again, and for that you have to copy you have to write an alter table statement so what you need to do in this case is alter table membership alter column and then simply say drop mast okay do we miss the column name And if you execute this query, then the mask on this column would be dropped. So if we go back to our user and execute the query, and we have not yet provided the unmask to this user. And if you execute this, you will see the original values for the discount code column. So the mask has been dropped for this user. Now, let's say I actually want to unmask the access for this user. Then you can just say grant unmask to test user and so I cannot do it here because this particular thing is executing as test user and you cannot unmask or give an access to yourself using your own account. So let's try opening a new query window and maybe it will allow us to do that. I'm just going to do that. And the command has been succeeded here going back to execute as test user. If you execute it now, you should be able to see all the original data as is because we have granted the unmask access for this particular user. So this was a brief overview of how you can implement the dynamic data masking in SQL Server and what features and options are available with the mask with function. I hope that this video was useful to you. All the relevant information is provided in the links below in the description box. Thanks a lot for watching. Stay tuned and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks a lot for watching. Goodbye.